Okay, I've got five o'clock, so I'm gonna call uh, the Harper City Council to order at this time. Um, we'll have a open up with a word of prayer. Father, we give you thanks that you've given us another day of life, and thankful, Father, that we can live in a free country where we can govern ourselves. And Father, we just pray tonight that you'll guide us, uh, help us make the right decisions that would benefit all those involved, the citizens of Hartford, the employees, and and each person who takes a part in the life here in Hartford. So, Father, we just ask that uh, decisions made honor you and pray these things in your name. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, do we have any visitors that wish to address the council tonight? Okay. If there are none, then uh, we'll take a look at the minutes from our last three meetings. Uh, the first one that we'll consider is the November 15th special call meeting. Uh, look those over, and then I'll entertain a motion to accept those minutes. Of course, y'all weren't weren't here, so you might have been here, but I make the motion. All right, accept the minutes. All right, Mary Bell makes the motion. Is there a second? A second. All right. Any discussion? None. So all in favor signify by one lifted hand. Thank you. Motion's carried. All right. Take a look at your special call meeting for December 14th. Thank you. Two first. motion. Kenny second. Motion to accept. Second. Okay, David seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, uplift your hand. Motion's carried. All right. Look at your third set of events there. Special call meeting on December 27th. Any discussion? All in favor, up with your hand. Thank you. Motion carried. Uh, Tara's not with us tonight. Uh, she's in quick care. Was had severe pain on the right side, so I don't know what the deal was, but it happened just you know, maybe an hour ago. So she sends her regrets. She can't be with us right now. I'm sure she'd much rather be here. All right, uh, we'll take a look at the financials for the month, all these financial reports that have been given. Uh, you have account balances, uh, page. Any questions about anything? That's one reason that we try to get this out to you a couple of days before a meeting so that you have a chance to go over a all of the accounts, all the checks that are written, try to get that questions answered. So, anybody and, have a, a list of the acronyms used in all this stuff? Well, <laughs> <laughs> the PEBSCO and all those and others. Sethco and <laughs> yeah, most of those are. Well, you can explain. Pe PEBSCO retirement. It is. It's, um, there's a plan that was offered a long time ago, and we only have one employee at this place. Oh, really? PLEF, K L E F P F, is funds that come from the state for to reimburse for. Um, PF? 
K L E F P F. Clip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We call it clip. Okay. That's, that's money that is given to the city for um, police to re uh, reduce our labor for police. Okay. Company. What about GF Suda? GF is general fund. And Suda. That's the state unemployment tax. You know, Suda, Suda. Suda is federal and Suda is state. Okay. It's employee tax. Well, it's Kentucky unemployment tax. Right? Think about it, those all right there in that same range, or all the way to play with the dog. Yes. The group right there. Oh, those are the ones I kept looking at. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Well, uh, since I, I know there's going to be a, a huge learning curve as, as we exactly. go on, but uh, yeah, as far as these funds and everything goes, yeah. and uh, trying to find a good time or, or forum to, uh, for my own knowledge, sure. Uh, Getting a basis for everything. We expect questions for right. the first several well, months. All right. Do we? Because it would definitely in the council meeting if we discuss every one of these by line in a right. meeting, or I can come in sometime and say. Yeah. That's. Fine. You have to understand that the report that you see is at the end of the month, right. or last month. Mm -hmm. This paper right here is where we currently stand. So we're 17 right. days into the next month. Correct. Okay, so. From a cash standpoint, that everyone mm -hmm. that has one of these, uh -huh. mm -hmm. this is the reconciliation from the actual book to the actual bank statement each month for all the accounts for the city. This balance here that's that will lay out here each meeting mm -hmm. is exactly what cash is on hand at the moment before we walk in this meeting. Right. So, so this one, under, just for instance, the water account. Yes. Okay. Where it says a check is out for eighty-three thousand, and we yes. have a. Yes. Okay. I don't so see where that was. You know, the book okay. balance right. is a negative fifty-nine. Yeah, that's what I was so, asking about. Okay. What happens is, is when you pay your water bill, uh -huh. and it's it's an accounting salt. <coughs> when you pay your water bill, you're technically paying water, sewer, and sanitation. Sure. It all would go into a water account mm -hmm. at the end of each month. That money is divvied out, and sewer gets their revenue, and right. sanitation gets their revenue. So what happens is a timing at the end of each month, because at the end of the month, water does not have enough money to fund mm -hmm. sanitation and sewer. So usually you're waiting to around the first 10 days of the next month to actually fund that. Okay. And that has been that way since I've right. been here. I guess it's so. those kind of details mm -hmm. that... Yeah. That's still in the, the blank that I can probably just come down and talk to you about. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, George and I already had this conversation, and he would be the first one to ask that question. That's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, a lot of times, people Maybe a future mayor put it. in this for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know about that. But, uh, uh, you know, us, by virtue of us being here at the table, you know, we, we all take an interest. Uh, and uh, the more information we have we make informed yeah, sure. right. yeah. and I'm available any time right. if anybody wants sure. I'd be glad right. to help you understand right and, and, and it's trivial sometimes as the question might come off right. it's it's you know it's not it's complicated to me until it's not true kind of a, no, it's 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 no so just you know bear with sure. me anyway no problem I know I speak on Dave's behalf too because I'm only one time <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like how we, you only, we only provide one of those sheets. So, oh, this you know, one here? Yeah. So, you know, oh. the others well, there you look go. at it, you know, <laughs> look at it, they can pass it around. Any other questions right. about finances? I'll just pass it this way and let it, let it come back around. The first part of the finances is what the budgeted items look like, and the last part is the checks that we wrote on each account, you know, and they're in the same order, so it helps you to look through the checks, see if there's one you have a question about, look through the, through the budget page and see if there's uh, some discrepancy or something that kind of 
sends up a red flag to you. Well, that's that's another question I have. When you, you said budget, I, I, I see, and I went through this really uh, okay. pretty thorough, even though I, a lot of them I don't know exactly what I'm looking at. Right. Is there a budget for different uh, sections, different offices that we fund? Does, you know, like does the police department, do they have a budget that they got to work within? Does the, the there, this should be in here. Uh, is, is it broke down by? The city has to have a budget and it has to either break even or right. the come up. And, you, and there is a budget. But they, within the city. They come under general fund. They're general fund, okay. Us. Okay. All right, that's. But then. Um. Because that's what I didn't see, uh, and I'm sure I was just looking at it and didn't understand which one right. of these was. But okay. uh, when it, it talks about, and I'll use the police again because that's the one I can relate to the most. But uh, uh, when it's when we look at the finances for that, right? Do they have an operating budget per se? It's just it's all included in the general fund. It's in the general the, fund. The, okay. The, uh, the departments or the funds that bring in their own revenue. Right. Okay. Water, sewer, um, cemetery, right. occupational tax, uh, municipal road aid, right. LGEA, which is another road fund. Right. Uh, those have separate budgets because they're bringing in revenue bringing and we in. should have to show the expenses on it. Okay. Other things like, well, the fire department has their own but they they don't generate the revenue, but they have their own uh, separate page there. Right. But uh, maintenance and police right. uh, come under the general fund mm -hmm. budget. So they're paid out of general fund tax dollars. Right. You know. So Did they're you tell them how much they can spend or general fund budgets. Do they have to put when they want to buy something, if they need something? Anybody that's under the general fund, do they come to you? Uh, all of our supervisors, if there's any expenditure over two hundred fifty dollars, they okay. have to come and get approval from me. Okay. Uh, under two hundred fifty, most of them are, you know, know what their budget looks like, or, and they're very cost conscious sure. about what they're doing. Uh, but if they if they've got a water pump that we've got to have repaired. They'll come up and they'll say, right. we've got problems with the water pump that we used to take water out of the river. Right. Uh, we've got to send it off. We've got to rent a, a pump to replace it while right. we're, it's being repaired, things like that. So they'll come and get permission. Uh, if it's over $2,500, then I have to bring it before, um, before the council sure. to get approval. Well, and again, you know, being a novice here, it, this is a lot to keep up with, so I'm just trying to. Well, that's why we pay her the big bucks. I, well, I'm looking because you're doing awesome. <laughs> I don't the know if I can keep. Head chooses right. to spend over fifty dollars. They must have a PR. Right. So there's your word. Comparative. You, I'm sorry. Comparative no. periods last year. Yes. Yeah. And you'll know that, but up on the top left hand side, you, you, it's comparing. And by the 2019, mm -hmm. we're in fiscal year thanks to a calendar year, mm -hmm. so it's July 1st, 18. To June 30th, 19 is actually your current period. Okay. So your comparative period there it shows 2018. Mm -hmm. It's actually July 1st, 2017 okay. to June 30th, 18. And in, in the year to date total. And the year to date is exactly yeah. the same one. Yeah. Your okay. current year to date would be for 19 <coughs> and 18. Okay. And since we weren't, we didn't have any visibility to the budget last year, were there any big shifts from this year, last year to this year? Because as long as we're comparing against that, and there's not a huge variance, for the know, most part, it's usually the same thing. The same, there's very little year. change. Okay. You know. your, ma your major change are your projects that we do. Would it be like a, a big water project that we just did? Yeah. yeah. And okay. you would see that, or we're getting ready to do the sidewalk project mm -hmm. and the general fund, so you'll see that. Okay. Those are the big ticket items. All right. But you know, some of these expenditures. Like what we've done last year, there may not have been a big expenditure there, and this year we had a breakdown that we had a large expenditure mm -hmm. for, and it's going to look like a huge yeah. difference in the variance mm -hmm. there. So just had to. We'll be caught up in a year. 
<laughs> you think no, so? <laughs> you don't ever get caught up with chasing our tail. <laughs> well, I don't mean about it as far as that. I'm just talking about our knowledge. Of, oh. After a cycle goes by, we'll, uh, we'll be catching up. I would say it's almost like being married to continually learn <laughs> something new every day. Yeah. Well. yeah, new rules daily. Yeah. All right. So I'll be wrong think? every time then. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Anytime you got free time, come up by and that's probably you know, ask your questions. Because I don't want to tie everybody learn. up on I mean, something that I already know the answer. That's what what they're here for. So, are the golf carts permitted per year? Pardon? Golf carts? Yes. Per year? Yeah. Sure. How do we do? How do we monitor that? Uh, how do we enforce it? Uh, is not like a sticker. I don't know. They get, they get a sticker on those. I think. Huh? I, yeah, you know. They're not a sticker, but they actually have their permit that they have to keep on the court. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. The police are the ones who. who the right. Monitoring. But it would be hard because they'd have to have probable cause, just like pulling you over and asking you for your driver's license. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if it, but if you don't have a license plate on your car, no. that's probable cause. Right. So if there was a sticker, then they could definitely enforce it. Otherwise, I, I don't see how they can enforce it unless there they was. They pretty another. much know who has been okay. You right. Know, who's, well, there's not that many really in town. Right. Well, there ought to be. Huh? There are there, yeah, there's a whole a, bunch. Yeah, there's a lot of golf carts out there. Yes, there are. Yeah. But you see that are out here on the streets? I don't see but one or two down where I live. So. Oh, yeah. they're all over George. <laughs> you got to roam the city. <laughs> but, and if there was a sticker. Huh? Is there anything in there the rules about being out on the streets at night in golf carts? Mm, I can't tell you that. We'd have sure. to review the order. Well, now, they're not allowed on the, the state or federal highways. Right. Any, no, any any it street has that has a 35 mile an hour speed limit, they yeah. can cross it right. at, the, at the closest point. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, but that's that's their limitation. They can't even be out there on it. Uh, I didn't know we had to have a sticker for them. Well, there's not, a, it's sticker not a sticker. That's what he's talking it's just about. A permit. It's just your. But that's why you can't enforce it because it doesn't have a sticker. But it's, well, it's difficult to enforce it because they can't just pull you over. Yeah, well, but if you had a sticker, Mr. Councilman, it does require a permit to have the golf cart. Even if you had a sticker, yeah. you still don't know who's driving it. I rode mine around in two years. What did I you know it. Like? All right. Uh, uh, remind me to tell, to tell Leroy. To oh, oh. <laughs> I know Leroy way back. All right. Any more kids questions? Driving we digress. We digress. Okay. Any more questions about the finances here? I have finances here. I don't know enough to really ask you. No, that's so. uh, understood. Um, but I do trust Lisa, so. But not me. <laughs> <laughs> I make mistakes. <laughs> but you know how to make your eight, so now, don't you? <laughs> okay. That, uh, is there a motion to adopt the financial reports as they've been I'll presented? Make a motion okay. To adopt second. It. Anybody I'll named David? Uh, any discussion? Any more discussion about it? Okay. All in favor of adopting those? Thank you. All right. Uh, we'd now go to the uh, old business, and the first item we have listed is uh, water asset management. Um, the question was brought up. Um, I can't remember. I guess it was last uh, last year that it was brought up about looking into uh, acquiring an asset management company to uh, take over the water plant, water distribution and collection. And so uh, we contacted a management company. Um, I think tonight what you have two things. Uh, first thing you have to consider is uh, do you want a, wa a water asset management company? Do you think that uh, that is a benefit for the people of Hartford to have a water asset management company? I think that's the first thing you have to determine. And then the uh, second thing would be, you know, just who is that water management company? Um, at any time, this discussion could be uh, tabled for consideration at a later date. If you think you would like more information, uh, just ha you'd have to let us know what information it is that you need. We've tried to provide you with 
a um, a set of numbers. Uh, what we have done there with that is over the past. Uh, well, you have your, in your packet you have the report about the water department, and what this is a six month report. We this is six months into the fiscal year, and so what we have done is we have gone through both the revenue and the expenses and have tried to determine, first of all, what revenue is going to be available to us, and secondly, what expenses are we going to have to be responsible for. And so we have calculated, what you have there is a calculation of the revenues expanded out to a year, and the expenses that we feel like we'll be responsible for. Um, and we've subtracted, and that gives us the available, what we feel like is the available funds for uh, utilizing a water asset management company. Now, do you, under, you, know, have, you understand what I'm saying? We just tried to figure out what our net is right. that we would have available that they would assume. Um, so... Go ahead. Just, just so I'm clear, I was here for that that okay. meeting. Yes. And uh, and uh, I got a couple of comments for that, and that we can talk about. But okay. uh, what you're saying just now, though, is our ex these expenses would be in addition to if we went with that water management company. Well, or right. They, there they are certain things that those? they don't cover, and they're here that we could ask them for sure to okay. make sure. But there are certain things, like we have a bond indebtedness that we have to pay on the bonds on on previous right. water projects. But we, we're going to have to pay that regardless of what we do, right? Exactly. So, to me, since we got to pay that, if we whether we go with them, don't go with them, or go with something else. That's always going to be there. I, I'm not real sure that right. we, that even needs to be And that's what we tried to do is in the right. expenses find those those topics sure. that are like that. That you right. know, we know we're going to have to pay uh, the payroll, the water clerk. We're going right. to have to pay her salary, uh, all the benefits that we pay her. We're going to have to pay for the postage and the printing of sending out our bills. Okay. Uh, <coughs> those, kind of, those are the kind of things that we've tried to... Calculate on what exactly. We're, okay, now we they also mentioned uh, some of the senior city guys that would be uh, affected if we went with the uh, company. That uh, would, how do you mean affected now? About for retirement, they're the closer retirement. Okay, so we would keep them, and they would be still getting their retirement. We would right. what we would do is basically lease them to the management gotcha. company. Okay, I remember that. They part. would still be. We would still be responsible for pay, paying their. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we. All their friends. They would. Benefit. They would take care of it. They would take care of it. But, right. But they would pay our lease, which in turn would pay for gotcha. their retirement for the last year or two, whatever it is and, they have. And for everyone else that didn't fall into that, that, that would be absorbed or hired by this company, right? Right. Is that what I understood? Uh, how did they feel about it? Have we talked to them? Um. Uh, I've had comments from different ones. Um, like everything else, I think they're they're uh, apprehensive about going to a different right. system from what they're doing now. Sure, you know, as anybody right. would be, I think. Was there anybody dead set against it? Say, I don't like um, it because uh, they wouldn't hear for the meeting. Some of them, some some of them might have been. I don't know, but yeah. uh, 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 but I'd be curious to know that. I actually. After that meeting, yeah. we took down some of their information and, and actually called the little town up in, uh, uh, where was it, Bradenburg? Hardenburg. Just to, just to get an idea. I just told them I'm sure. an incoming guy. Just got, and that was kind of a, a favorable phone call for right. the water sure. company. And being out of compliant is not favorable. I, would, I was kind of leaning towards uh, favorable, you know, looking at right. going with that. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't add a point where I could say yes. Let's okay. do this because I don't have enough information. Yeah. Obviously, some there's a lot of unknowns for me. But I think, as far as my opinion is, it, I, I think it would be in our best interest to 
look into it uh, more, maybe more aggressively. Well, they're, they're available if you want more information, if you'd like to contact mm -hmm. them and talk with them at more mm -hmm. length, you know. That well, I'd also need from, from us, you know, what, you, what we're putting together, what you've already put together. Right. Uh, and try to dial there, in that number better. Okay. Um, Mayor, could I just yes, you can. Uh, I'm David Wakefield. I'm at Marl City. I'm with uh, Veolia. I'm the regional manager for uh, Kentucky and Tennessee. And um, originally how this started was uh, <coughs> the mayor and council were looking at alternatives. I know they looked at purchasing water possibly from Ohio County different options because there are some major issues on the table that's been long-term issues. Um, the TTHMs and HAAs, which are carcinogens uh, that are make up in, they're in the water system. And you've been in violation for that since it started, like in 1993, um, going back and looking at the compliance record. I know there's new KRS that just came out where they're going to stop just making you send that letter out to your customers, whether it's every month or every quarter, they're going to really start cracking down and enforcing the systems that have been in violation over years to do something. You wouldn't happen to know that KRS. I, I, I don't offhand, but it just passed, and I can find out for you. But it, it's basically to be able to put more teeth in the EPA's enforcement Sure. to make sure that municipalities and water districts are serving safe drinking water to their customers. So basically what they're going to do then, they're going to come in and say, okay, you know, you've been in violation, we make you send these letters out, you're going to have to come up with a dead set plan, either go with a contract management company, whether it be Violi or somebody else, or purchase water from another system that's in compliance. So right. that's what it's going to come to eventually. And, but you have more issues than just the violations. You have over a 50% water loss. So you're producing 10 million gallons a month and you're only selling 5 million gallons a month. So that's a major issue. We think we put together a very comprehensive cost-effective plan. And this is not just a guesstimate or estimate. When, when, they, when the council asks us and the mayor asks us, we basically, we brought experts in from throughout Veolia, um, brought them up from Florida. We brought our HR director in to even to meet with the employees so we could kind of, because uh, they had a lot of questions. You know, nobody likes change. And uh, so they had a lot of questions and concerns, so we brought our HR partner in from Tampa, and he met with all the employees and told them, showed them, laid everything out, exactly what our benefits were and how it compared to the city's benefits. So they're all fully aware of that. We also, um, in our, this proposal is a guaranteed price bid. This is a bid, okay? It's a guaranteed <coughs> price. It's not an estimate. So, and this will only change based on uh, on an annual basis, we, if, if we were able to come to an agreement and we'd write a contract and we'd say this is your guaranteed price, you know what you're going to spend, but we'd write that contract up to where if once we s slow down this water loss and get this water loss under control, there would be a calculation in our contract that would reduce our fee because if we're not having to produce as much water, our, our costs are going to be less. So there's going to be plus minus 10%. Like if we go the whole year and we decrease uh, the flow by 10%, then there's a calculation to reduce, uh, decrease our fee in that. And the only other change in the fee would be based on, we would agree on a CPI calculation, where that CPI generally, instead of your general all-purpose CPI, would be like water, sewer, and trash CPI. And we would plug that into the contract, and whatever that CPI was, that would be the only thing that we could raise our contract annually, whether that CPI is 0.7% or whether it's 2.5%. Two, two so that's, that's how our contract would be based upon. So as far as the violations, um, when we first went to Hyrule Hardensburg, they were in the same boat. Right. They, they were out of violation uh, on both TTHMs and HAAs. They were on the same source water at that time. On Rough River and so we have a, not only just our local people at Hardensburg but we got them in compliance and we know how to do it 
and we also have water experts that we can call out from throughout Veolia uh, that will assist us if you if you hire us to manage your facilities. Out of all the facilities I manage, we've been the least amount of time we've been there is 1995. So we've been at least 23 years at all the facilities I manage. So if we weren't doing a good job, they wouldn't keep renewing their contract with us. So um, we think this is very cost effective. We reviewed all of your financials. We put months of work into putting together this document and it covers everything. All the costs, all employee costs, all chemical costs, you know, uh, lab supplies, it, it covers all costs. There's a $72,000 a year maintenance budget in there for any items that are under $2,500, which would be capital that we would come back to you for if there was a capital expenditure that need to be made. But anything under $2,500, pump goes down, we need to fix it today. We got a $72,000 a year, $6,000 a month maintenance budget built into this total number, okay? So you know up front what you're gonna spend. And that, that 72,000 is a no markup, no margin, whatever we spend, we spend. If we don't spend it all, we rebate it back. If we go over, then we bill you. So it's, this is a very close number. We've been doing this for a long time and we think it's very fair. And we know you guys are new. We've spent quite a bit of time with the, the last council. I know Jerry and the other Jerry and the mayor also came up to Hardinsburg. They met with the Hardinsburg mayor where we've been since 1995. So they know they toured our facilities. They know what kind of facilities we run there. I think Jerry would tell you it's a top-notch, well-run facility. It, it was. I was very impressed with it. So I know it's going to be very difficult for you to make a decision on a contract that you're not familiar with it. So my suggestion would be, if you want to designate two or three of you, we'd be more than glad to have a workshop, sit down, go through every piece of this, answer all of your questions. That's all I would ask that you fully vet our contract before you make a decision on it. Because it could benefit, well it definitely will benefit, but it will definitely affect the direction of your community and your water system uh, going forward and the responsibility to your constituents and your customers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pretty much answered <clears throat> questions I was going to ask. So that's <laughs> actually, uh, I think that's a good idea. I don't know how y'all feel about it. Uh, I agree. Look more into it. Go yeah, off of these numbers here and actually sit in on one. Their, their contract is for $797,000. Mm -hmm. Write a check. Here we wrote one here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Seven. So what was that? Seven hundred ninety-seven thousand. Did you not get a copy of three three hundred thirty? What they handed out the last time? Hmm. Uh, no, I, I was here for the the meeting, but I didn't, I didn't get a copy of what they handed out. I think the only portion of that contract was like seven twenty-four or something. That yeah, seventy-two. No, seventy-two was, was the the. Uh, Maintenance. Maintenance contract. And that also included a, a three and a half percent increase. Uh, we calculated all the employees at their current salary and plugged in a three and a half percent raise for all the employees <coughs> from day one. And I don't think they've received a raise for the last couple of years. Oh, I got you. You had it on here. I see it now. It's already on there. You no, know, in defense of our operators, uh, this past time, you know, we, we did. Uh, pass inspection as far as our THM and HAA, so we were under the limits there. So uh, winter time is a little better time to pass those tests than right. maybe summertime. But and part of the flushing that we have to do is because of our large storage tank. Mm -hmm. That's, it's a problem, and hopefully within the next year or two we can engineer a solution to reduce the volume of that tank uh, somehow to use just the upper half or so to mm -hmm. reduce down the amount of flushing that we have to do. The flushing is just because of the chlorinated water coming in, mixing with water that's been in there for a while, getting in the lines, and then we have lower chlor chlorine than what we need, and so that's why we have to flush is to try to keep the chlorine level up in the lines. And 
So this 797, does it reduce, does it relieve us of some of the other financial? No, we still have things like Sarah's payroll, her benefits, postage, right. printing, our bond indebtedness, right. all those things that we've got it, that we've called out. How much does it relieve us of? Um, well, you'd have to. That's what I'm. Yeah. You'd have That's to what subtract I'm that number that was given to you from this water statement here. Okay, our total expenses for six months is three hundred ninety-one thousand dollars. Right. All right. We've calculated on there what you we'd still be responsible for. Even with them, so which one? Which one is this that we were still right here? The water expense. Okay, so we're still responsible for that, even with this. Mm -hmm. After paying mm -hmm. it, uh, mm -hmm. so you're so we're going to add this to this. Is that what you're saying? Mm -mm. I'm saying once these. Oh guys yeah, come I know in, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah that's what, what they would, they? that's what they would cost us. Right, and that's too high, right there. Right. Uh, so they would absorb some. Well, of course, of this, this is six months, right? This, uh, this is six months. You take this number double and, and double it, double it, and then subtract off what we've got there. All right. Let me get that number real quick. So we're taking that number. Yep. Taking that number there. 391. And double it. That would be our expenses for the whole year. So it's 500000 And we've calculated this is what we would be responsible for. So right. we take that off of that. Okay. And that would be money that, in essence, would be available to pay for that. My accountant and I get into a... We come in from different directions. Right. Well, I, right, I can't. but that's okay. That's good. That's what you. <laughs> and, and I'd just like to say, yeah, Mayor, that we're in no way diminishing the job that your operators are doing. We'd be yeah. happy to have them all as employees. Right, they're doing the best they can with the resources they have. And when we reduce this water loss, that's going to be a huge savings uh, for the city. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What's, What's uh, Go ahead. I do have a question. So what is the track record related to water loss reduction in your other in Well, your other at, uh, at Hardensburg, we, we serve the entire county and both the other two incorporated cities, and our water loss is under 15%. Yeah, that's an, so that's, year, that's an acceptable rate. But well, year now. one, was it 10% improvement? What, what's the improvement? I, I don't have those exact numbers, but I know it was... I don't have the exact numbers. What well, they had in Hardsburg, they had a system about like the one we have here, mm -hmm. and they have gone to a different system up there. They use a reverse osmosis plant. Uh, it's only one in the state that a municipality has, and they have. They're getting well water. They're not getting water out of uh, river like we do. So there's a lot of uh, there's some difference. And we've grown that system too. I mean when. When we first went there, they had nine miles of distribution system. Yeah. And now they have 420. Yeah, they're feeding the whole county. But we've helped them plan throughout. We've held their hand through all that planning and growth. And, uh, but it's a, it's, it's a, there's two different types of two different systems. Mm -hmm. You know, where they were getting right. water out of Rough Creek Reservoir, much like the water we get out of mm -hmm. Rough Creek. Now, when we they're first, now getting them out of the water that's coming out of wells. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so there's a difference in the makeup of the two water sources. So, so the well water would be easier to treat than here. Yeah, we can't do it, though. I've already looked into it. All of our water is too high in iron content to be mm -hmm. usable. Well, you do have your treatment system at your water plant is what's called an active flow system, and that's a Veolia water technology. That's our technology. So we operate many other active coal plants in the south, all over the country, and we can optimize that. That's a good, that's a good process, and we can optimize that process to help you get compliance. But that is our technology. 
and Hardensburg was in the same shape that you are in now. Before they had reverse osmosis, they had a surface water plant that was on the same source. They were out of compliance for TGHMs and HAAs, and BOE was able to bring that plant into compliance. Well before we moved to a new facility on the Ohio River. So we, we've been there, we've handled the same source, uh, and we know what to do to bring it into compliance. And there's a lot of changes that would be made, and we've calculated a lot of that in. Now, this price also, uh, and I don't want to take up too much of your time, but uh, this price also includes about $140,000 of things that we're going to need to do, like sludge removal out of your systems, where you just the system's just packed full of sludge, and your backwash lagoons are full of sludge. Um, so there's some equipment that needed to be brought in and some different things. So, And by doing that, by pricing that into our contract for a 10-year term, we're able to spread those costs out over the 10 years of the contract, which really makes it feasible. So not, not only water, but you're handling sewer. We're yeah. handling collection system as yeah. well. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, only two point. The payments to the regional wastewater is still our baby. Yeah. But we hope, we hope to help you reduce your I&I &I right. because all your rainwater that's getting into your system, you're paying the regional plant to treat. So, and you also have about eight miles of collection system that you don't have any, um, that you don't have any uh, way of knowing what's going on there because your master meter is eight miles before it gets to the plant. Right. So we would work on, as we have all kinds of, uh, uh, roving cameras that go into sewers and different ways to uh, re help you reduce your I and I, which would be included in this too. So that could reduce your overall cost that you're paying the regional plant to treat your sewage. So we're st we're st still paying a regional plant for the sewage, and we're also making a payment on Bonds. sewers, right? Which that's going to be there regardless. Right. So for the next forty years. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, since this is a, one of the hotter topics, I think we, we ought to spend the most time on that. So I, I, I think I, our best place to start, I don't know about you fellas, right. I haven't spent a great deal of time with our employees mm -hmm. at the water plant. Right. I had rather start with them and see what their feelings are. Oh, definitely. Check That's with what with them I was on a number right. of issues. And, um, yeah, right. It, if you haven't seen a copy of the of uh, the proposal, and then I don't know is is there a legal issue? Tara's not here, but of entering into any working relationship uh, we've, over we've, a we've certain amount into, of money. We've, we've looked into it. Okay. The opinion of the attorney general is that it's mm. a professional fee that, much as you would hire a doctor or an artist. Uh, Mm -hmm. it's, it's professional fee is not covered under the $20,000 requirement. Okay. Yeah. And you got to go up to the plant up there? Yes. What did you think of it? Cause I, I, I wish we had the plant down here, but right. <laughs> unfortunately we can't do it. Right, know? right. It's a, what was it, $7 million plant at right. uh, 2 million gallon a day capacity and it's sure. not, they don't do anything near capacity and feed the whole county, you know. Right. So I'll right. be glad to take you up there if you want to talk with the mayor and anybody else that can get away. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, they monitor what the plant's doing from their house mm -hmm. with their computers and phones and stuff. And but it's, that's a system that's totally out of our. It is. So, really top. Uh, would you all prefer to table this until next month and then yeah. give you a chance yes. to? Yeah, I yeah, but we definitely want Okay, to then I'd entertain a motion to table yeah. this item. Okay. I second. Yeah. All right, all in favor of tabling it? All right, we'll do that then. Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, please contact me. Uh, be happy to set up a workshop with you, or you can just come up and visit us up there. Um, but uh, that's all I would ask. If you fully vet uh, our proposal, uh, and if you don't do something with us, I would hope that you would have a plan to go forward um, for the for the sake of the community. And I know if you come to Hardensburg, I know it's totally different now, but they were exactly in your shoes financially, 
plant-wise when they hired us in 1995, and I would like to think that we had uh, some impact on the improvement and the growth they've had over the years so with, our, uh, with our help and our leadership. And we don't have any control. We don't own anything. We just manage it for you. We don't have any control over your rates. That's all you guys. We, we don't want to own it. We're just a professional management company, and that's how, that's how we do our business is long-term contracts, and we, we have to keep our clients viable or we can't keep those long-term contracts. So thank you very much for your time. And thank I look you. Forward to thank you all for coming down. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the next item, uh, Freak's House. Um, Hartford owns a, a house over here. We own a house over here behind the water plant. Okay, uh, it's where Wayne Helen Priest lived. And um, we have, it belongs to us. And so uh, we had one of our policemen living there. We actually have had two policemen living there at different times. Uh, one of the latest policemen that lived there has moved out, bought a house over at Beaver Dam. And so the question becomes, what do we want to do with the house? So I've asked uh, Roger Emery to, to kind of give us an idea about what he thinks the house is worth, um, the possibility of what would be the possibility of selling it or the possibility of renting it. Uh, he's looked at the house. Of course, the house is an older house. Uh, he thought that it probably is going to require at least Twenty twenty-five thousand dollars worth of work. Uh, basement is kind of wall is kind of buckling a little bit, um, but uh, you know it, it is a serviceable house. It's got a good heating and cooling system in it. It's got a good roof on it, a fairly recent roof. Uh, he thinks that if we sold it, we could probably put it on the market for about, about roughly forty-five thousand dollars. Um, we have a, an employee at the water plant who would like to rent the house. Uh, there's a distinct advantage for us to rent the house out to a water plant employee operator because in case of emergency within walking distance of, of the plant. Um, Rent-wise, we were getting about $300 a month with the stipulation that if the renter did any repairs, uh, replaced faucets, painted, uh, did anything to the house to help improve the house, we would deduct that from the rent. That's the way the old plan was. Uh, uh, I'm open for whatever you all want to decide. Um, David? I'd say on that house, too, we uh, got a gate back there that comes from the water department because I mow back, used to mow back in there. And the house is over here, and the access to that is coming out of the water department. So if you sold it, you would be, that right of way would still be <coughs> the city. <laughs> yeah, we have so, truck. We have some delivery trucks that pull up in there, and there's no place to turn around. They just open a gate, and that truck comes out the driveway of that house. Right. It's a little convenient if we sold it and didn't uh, have any kind of uh, an agreement with them. We wouldn't have that opportunity. So, um, I personally think that the shape Hartford is in, being a landlocked community. Mm -hmm. And we need to hang on to that property, period. Well, and if someone right. like Josh wants to live in it, I think we should rent it to him. Okay. Right. Because okay. I think it's better to have someone in a house. And even if we have to go up and, and shore that wall, if there's any damage as far as yeah. the outside structure, yeah. the basement know, metal is, post is goes the, long worst, way. the worst part of yeah. it. Yeah. And, uh, like I said, it would take quite a bit to, to yeah. do that. I don't know if we have to do it right now, but we'd have to do it yeah. probably one of these days. But 
um, you know, he's he's ready to move in right now if we wanted to rent it, and um, that would be my recommendation to you is that we rent it for that same deal of three hundred a month, and he, any improvements would be deducted from the three hundred dollars. I make the motion as stated. Okay. okay. All right. Now then, let's have discussion about the motion. If you have any discussion about it. So rent, rent stays at three hundred. Pardon. Rent stays at three hundred unless he is doing repairs. Right, and then we would deduct. He would have to produce uh, receipts to show that you know whatever right. he'd expended had been. Would that pay the taxes and insurance? Pardon. Would that three hundred a month pay the taxes and insurance on it? Uh, we're doing that now anyway. It's covered under the city's policy. Mm -hmm. All of our all of our buildings and everything is covered under that. Okay. So it's, it's really a drop in the bucket when you consider what all we're well, insuring. There's a difference between repair and design. Yeah, you know, right. And, uh, and so it would have to be some sort of repair would be brought to us. Anything to improve the it, right. value of the house. Right. It, like if he painted. <coughs> yeah, right. Okay. I have quite a few plans for that. You know, the outside. Oh, I want you in there. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if we're going to put it in the in a in right, a, in a boat, we want to make, a, right, and it would yeah. have to yeah. include things like you would have to be notified that any asbestos, any lead paint, or anything like yeah. that would you would be your yeah, your, okay. right. All right. Any more discussion regarding that? All right, seeing none, if you're in favor of that, signify by that, lift your hand. All right, everybody send you listen on that. Thank, Thank you. Um, yeah. The next item says sewer reimbursement. We placed a, uh, we had to do a sewer project out off, just off Carlisle Road. Actually, it's between Maiden Lane and, you all can learn where all the city streets are yeah. eventually. Uh, it's Carl between. Is going up to the hospital. Going up there. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. But it's between Maiden Lane, which is the first street, and after behind Bob's, Bob's. there's a street, yeah. not an alleyway, right. and Charlotte. Charlotte. Okay, between there, we've had problems. Uh, it's an old sewer line. It was it was designed poorly. There's no drain to it. So what we've done is we've gone in and placed two new manholes, and connected to. Uh, existing line on Carlisle Road. Uh, that work was done by Luttrell and Son. Uh, it cost us $20,000. Um, the money comes out of our sewer fund, but we try to utilize the occupational tax to pay our occupational tax fund. In the past, we've utilized it to help pay for infrastructure costs. Uh, things like sewer lines, water lines, sidewalks, anything like that. We've used the occupational tax for that. And so what I would like to recommend is that we take $20,000 out of the occupational tax fund to reimburse the, the sewer fund and leave it where it is. Because it was a sewer project, it has to come out of sewer. But we tried maybe to build the sewer back up, sewer fund back up by taking it out of occupational tax, uh, which we have a lot more of it than we do uh, the sewer fund. So that would be my recommendation to you. If you want to make a motion to do that, fine. If you don't, that's fine. Okay. I'll make a motion that we take it out of the occupational tax and transfer it into the sewer fund. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, now discussion about it. Any questions? Discussion, anything like that. But when you transfer a fund from one fund, right? Like that. Uh, and again, sure. Bear with me there, and I, and I apologize for my ignorance on a lot of this no. stuff here. But I'm, I'm, I'm really, I care about it. Right. Like everybody else does, and I'm trying to understand it, and make sure we do the right thing as far as legally. You know, right. I'm, and I'm retired. I don't need to be in the pokey for some reason. <laughs> so, uh, but. So, how do you do? How do we do that? It, it, is it because, since it's all Hartford funds anyway? Well, when it's just a bookkeeping. It's a bookkeeping it's a book thing. thing. Okay. Uh, accounting thing. Right. Because so we're not going to keep somebody from their pension 
because we transferred their money from no, the, no, no, okay. No. It's, it's like you said, uh, when the occupational tax was instituted, it never was strictly specified for what it was spent to be spent. Right. But we, I think past councils have always said that we would use that money to take care of infrastructure, and that covers a broad area right. you know, of expenses. Sewer funds can only be used, well, we use that to pay regional wastewater primarily. That's what right. the, that fund is used for. Right. So if we take money out of that to do the sewer project, which it was a sewer project, right. that reduces the amount of money we've got available for the regional wastewater. Mm -hmm. So we try to replenish that back up with the money that came in to pay regional wastewater, you know, from people's water bills, mm -hmm. so that we've got the, the resources to pay our regional wastewater bill every month, and then we we'll use this occupational tax to do the infrastructure mm -hmm. project that went through mm -hmm. the sewer. Now, if it was a water project, we had to wet, lay a water line, mm -hmm. we would do the same thing with the water budget. You know, we would mm -hmm. try to reimburse water for the expenses of land and water line or doing a sidewalk project. You know, we've got a sidewalk project coming up mm -hmm. and there'll be some in-kind work and money that we have to expend uh, as our share of doing the project. You know, we can't get a full grant to do the whole project. We can't get funding to do the whole project. We only get maybe 80%. Mm -hmm. So the rest of that is up to us and we can settle some of that by doing in-kind work. Like we might <coughs> demolish the sidewalks our, ourselves and haul it off. Okay. Right. That saves contractors' expense, you know, I'm so that's our that, fair. Right. Okay. But there may be some things that we do with the sidewalk project that we don't have a sidewalk maintenance fee or fund. Right. That's general fund. That's a ge so that's if we take it out of general fund, we need to take the occupational tax and reimburse right. the general fund right. for I the was, infrastructure. I, I'm clear on it now. I just okay. to make sure we're... That's all we're doing is just... Right. It was because that occupational tax has always had the... We've always had the impression, it's never been designated, but we've had the impression that it was to be spent, you know, on infrastructure. That way we could do things that wouldn't require grants or going through a big contract or right. whatever else. It's still... It, if it's over twenty thousand dollars, we still have to bid the project, mm -hmm. you know. But paying for it, we we've got we've always used to occupational tax as kind of a savings resource for us. Like if we're short on payroll, mm -hmm. which we will be probably in later months of our budget year, maybe in June, we might be end up short. Right. And so what we would do is we would go and borrow from the occupational tax and try to pay that back once we get our tax dollars in, right. at the, you know, when those come in. So We're going to have to come just, up with some revenue idea. Well, <laughs> well you all, all contribute to the occupational tax. When they pay you for your monthly fee for here, they'll take part of it back and say, this is occupational tax. <laughs> so sure, I'll give it all to them. We're working in the city making limits. me a nervous wreck. I'll give it all to them. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that made me try. It's a... It's a convoluted system of having all these different funds. You've seen the funds. I've seen that, yeah. I'm okay. like, wow. And it's, just, how, how it's, much, it's how the way we this? have to simplify our our auditors uh, right. uh, require us to try to keep as best of track record of what we spend right. and take in. And that's the best way that our accountant can can't deal with it. The easiest way to think of it is think of a fund as a business. Every right. single fund is a separate business. Right. You have financials, you have budget, every, the whole mm -hmm. shebang for every single fund. All right, well, we're going to pay that bill. Occupational tax is kind of like our savings fund over here. That right. Really. All right. Um, we need a vote. Uh, we need a vote. Yeah, I do. There's more discussion about it. Okay, that's fine. All in favor of transferring that money, say five up, lift your hand, thank you. Motion's carried. Um, second piece. Huh? That's the second piece of it. Yeah, 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 I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. In order for us to gain a right-of-way,
to a backyard. We were going to go through a storage building, a little storage barn, 8 by 12. And it had been there so long that we could not move it. It would fall apart. So in order for us to get the right of way, we had to promise that we would replace her barn. It cost us $1,896. It's an 8 by 12 storage building. And... <laughs> you to do my I, I like... <laughs> I'd like a motion to allow us to take that money out of occupational tax as well because it's part of this sewer project. It was not the contract with Luttrell's, but it, it was the part that gave us the right of way right. to enter into the contract with Luttrell's. So I'd like a motion that we pay that out of occupational tax as well. I make a motion okay, and state it. Second. All right. Is there any discussion to this? It's the cheapest barn we could find. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She was very gracious uh, to let us do it. You know, sometimes people don't want their yards torn up. Right. Lots of does a great job of putting it back, but it's still but it's just not, like, not like it was. Yeah. <laughs> not like it. And her shed, we had to move it because that's the other side of that was where the main manhole was going. So had to go right through the shed. So yeah. is there any discussion regarding that? Okay, if you're in favor of doing that, up lift your hand. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, we come to new business. Uh, first thing you see is dude solution. Yes, I want to know about this. <laughs> you want to meet the dude? Yeah, I want to meet the dude. All right. I got a call the other yeah. day from a company in North Carolina. Dude Solution provides access to software that's in the cloud. We we don't we wouldn't have it downloaded on our computers or anything like that. But it's a system that <coughs> on this software it does the same thing just about that Violi was going to do except there's no there they don't have any their manpower or trucks or anything involved. What it would do is that it would provide a record. Uh, it would give us a schedule of routine maintenance. It would uh, allow us for any repairs to enter repairs into this record keeping system. It, uh, it, it gives us a guideline whether we go with Veolia, whether we go with this, uh, whether we have just a checklist on a clipboard. Uh, I'm trying to initiate a routine maintenance schedule for our water plant so that once every day, once every week, once every month or quarter or year, whatever it is, whatever needs to be done, it's checked off. Somebody takes the responsibility of doing that. And basically what it would amount to is every day when the operator comes in, they would take care of whatever their first immediate task is. And then sit down at a computer. They would log on. They would go down through this day, whatever day it is. It would have, this is the maintenance that needs to be done today, or this is uh, uh or if there was a repair that was done, then that person would enter in all the information about the repair. That uh, It's just a, well, I can read to you what their promotion says. It's a cloud-based maintenance system. Uh, cloud-based, of course, for a person like me that's Hard to used, to, that used to the those calling the operator or <laughs> called the operator in the past, you know, with no dial or anything like that. But it's it's access to a software program that's available to us. It'll have it'll help us to it says to initiate, to assign, and to track the progress of the maintenance work orders, to manage our assets and equipment, uh, do preventive maintenance, document management, uh, report. Uh, they'll be able to do it off of an iPad. Uh, what we're trying to do is get into a regular routine system of uh, doing the required management at the plant. Uh, 
he he told you that we've got a uh, a pre-treatment basin down here. It's it's underneath the fluorescent lights outside under the canopy. The raw water comes in, sodium permanganate's added there, and it circles around and comes in and enters into the plant from that. Is that right? Okay. That the training is taking. Yeah. The <laughs> The basin is 10 feet deep, but it's filled up with 7 feet of sludge right now, mm -hmm. okay? The water coming in has the, the permanganate introduced, but it doesn't stay in this basin long enough for the permanganate to have the opportunity to, to work like it should. Because it's supposed to be 10 feet. Yeah, it's supposed to be a lot of water in there right. slowly right. going out instead of right. so 3 feet just, of water just going, going out too fast. Across, okay. Right. That, that's a maintenance problem. Right. It can be done. They don't have to call in special equipment. We've got the capabilities. Well, with the roof being on there, it has made it really hard. But he can take a fire hose to a small hydrant we've got there, yeah, yeah. and we can shut the water off, yeah, let it go it down, and we can flush it out, mm -hmm. and it goes into the... The back Lagoon. The back Lagoon. There's yeah. another problem right there. Yeah, Good. yeah, because they need to be... Clean out, out because they're too full. Yeah, that will require equipment probably. But can we do it for less than seven hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars? We'll get it done. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. That if seems we, like the primary. Yeah. See, there's if, more if we'd, yeah. if we'd had the routine maintenance schedule, then every month or two or three, they would say it's time to clean out. And, you know, it don't be only a foot deep at that time. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't take as long as it's going to take to clean out seven feet of it using right. a right. hose, you see. So that's what I'm trying to get to is, you know, we we can start doing something else and we forget about the things that need to be done. Right. Okay. This way, somebody would sit down once they got the water started or whatever it is that they need to do first thing to get everything operating then they can sit down at the computer and say, okay, it's time to uh, to clean out the, the pre-treatment basin, okay? Mm -hmm. So they would know that after they get the water taken care of today, then shut the, shut the water off. After they got the tank full, shut the water off, go in there and clean out the basin and be done with it, you know, and, and a lot less time than it's going to take to do seven feet. And, and the purpose of having the lagoons and everything was to reduce our waste management uh, costs, right? Well, the backwash lagoons yeah. are whenever the filters get... Because we're paying... How's it working right now? It's not. Is what well, it is. It's just that we've let the car go too long without an oil change. Right. Exactly. You know, that's what we've done. Something like that. But if we can get it started then... Right, because we're paying... Right. We're paying a payment, for, like you said, for the next four years. For what? That's for the work that's, that has been done. Like yeah, whenever right. the plant was, whenever the plant was uh, refurbished this past year. Right. Uh, whenever we added new lines to get rid of dead end lines in town. Right. Whenever we uh, did the routine refurbishing of the mm -hmm. big water tank. You know, those are things that had to be done. They, I mean. It had been 26 years since the plant had ever had anything sure. done to it. 20 years since the, the water tank had been painted, you know. Uh, the so dead who's end handling lines, our sewer right now? As far as who's processing our sewer? The, all, of, all the sewage is going down to regional wastewater. Regional wastewater. Right. Yes. And, and we need to put a valve in down here at the right. last location when it leaves our pump station down here we need to put a, a meter there to meter what we're sending down to the plant in Correct. case we've got lines broken down through there that we're paying for I and I which is right. water I, coming I in. I guess my bottom line question is why haven't that happened yet? Are, are, are well, that let, still me, in let me explain something to you before George became mayor. Okay. I was on a committee to serve with a couple of past um, council members and we went into that thoroughly, but at mm -hmm. that time the mayor was not willing to take the responsibility to do that. Okay. Because 
I don't know what his reasons were. I didn't even say that. Right. But we talked about that. I've got more information on that source system sitting on my computer home than I sure. will ever understand if I live another hundred years. <laughs> you notice I said another. <laughs> I didn't say another. <laughs> but, we didn't wonder about that. <laughs> but it, it, he's totally right. We mm -hmm. just haven't done it. Right, Nobody sure. really wanted to do it. And nobody thought it was that important. Seems like it's going to be, though. Oh, it is. Yeah. It already right. is. That regional sewer treatment plant right. is... And, and the benefit of having yeah. our own meter... Uh, right here. Well, yeah, right here. Right here. Right here. Well, be able to be right. yes, to us. Right. And it's about the same way with the water system. Right. I spoke to Lonnie up here. He's the regional manager right. of the plant. And he said if they had that down there, it would cut down, and they would know what was going over there to the water. They could that's what I'm yeah, talking exactly. about. Yeah, exactly. And that was recommended. Right. Yeah. Get that meter in. So, we're supposed to be about the solutions. Right. Uh, we identify the issues, and then we come up with a solution. We can't kick that can down the road for another ten years. Or no. Something. So no. We, that's right. We need to identify it. Right. Make a decision on it, and fix it. Yeah. I'm all about that. Right. Let's do that. Uh, Saving money is what we're right. after. Yes. So I mean, so the the software, the, the request, so the C, it's like a CMMS system, where where it's maintenance management. Yeah. So is this the only solution that we've looked at, or because I know there's lots of them on the market? It, right. This is the only one that was presented to us. Uh, I bring it to you, see if you're even halfway interested. If you're interested in it, I can go s search out more system uh, like this one. Yeah, I uh, think you should entertain different options. This one, this one costs. You can't run a plant without a good right. management system. Well, I had talked to the engineer when we were redoing the plant down here, and I had told him, you know, what I'd like to have is just a simple checklist. Go on a clipboard. If you know, mm -hmm. and this is the check for today or this month or, you know, it's going to be a lengthy list. Mm -hmm. he, he hasn't done it yet, you know, because it is such a lengthy list and it's, it's pretty involved. This software is already, it's already got everything on it. You know, every task that needs to be done, in fact, it's got some things that we, we don't have, you know, that we wouldn't pay attention to. And we can also add anything to it that we have that doesn't, that's not on this list. Mm -hmm. But I would say the list is pretty comprehensive because it's, it's quite lengthy and, you know, several pages. And, of course, at the end of the year or at the end of any period, you get a report about here's the repairs that were done, this is how much it cost us, you know, and so it's a, a, a reporting system as well as the, reminder of the maintenance system. This software is $2,600 a year, which is really it's cheap for something like that. drop in the bucket, yeah. Long way to save $100,000 or something. $797,000, yeah. Okay, Josh. I would ask that you all consider something like that. You know, let us, you know, with that software, you know, let, you know, let us, especially the young ones, you know, come in there and try to manage that, you know, before you get somebody out, you know, that don't know the plant as thoroughly as we do, right. you know, and know the issues of that plant. Um, that seems unreasonably cheap. Well, would you rather table and it like this other one and give you all time to think about it? No. Or? I don't think we should for that cost. I think we ought to go ahead and do it and get it implemented. I think it would be best to look at other options. I think that we, sh we should decide, yeah, it's the right thing to do. Is that the right company to go with? Are there yeah. other two or three options? I think we should evaluate three bids and say, okay, yep, this is this one offers us the most. More bang for the buck. Yeah. 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 The, the, the price seems about yeah. right to me with my experience, so. We, we did ask the our IT people that work with other municipalities what they had seen, and there are, supposedly they said there were other cities that had are using something, mm -hmm. and they gave us an example of Logan Todd, but then when I called, 
they're not using anything. They're using Excel to maintain mm -hmm. their items. They're making their own spreadsheet. Yeah. But I mean, we're not the only one that has only city that has water department. Mm -hmm. Right. Every little city that has a water plant has the exact same problems that we've got. Right. Yep. And I, I'm proud to say that I think ours is functioning as good or better than any of them. You it know. functioned better if it had that seven foot of do what now? Sludge, sludge out of there. Sludge cleaned out. Yeah. It'd do better than that. Yeah. And I think our Why can't we do that? So we're paying we for, we're only we paying for what not we use and not eight thousand dollars somebody else. else. <laughs> I think the, the, the would would reduce our cost. wastewater cost. At least dial it in to where we know exactly. That way, these numbers here would iron out a little bit. Yeah, uh, that's been an ongoing issue for I know for years with Hartford. Uh, we've tried to rebel. That backfired. I think, in right. my estimation, um, we've not had a. How do I say it? All, all of us on the same page that are on the the board down right. there. Um, there's a lot of unanswered questions. There's a lack of transparency. I think that's very evident. Yeah, that's what we need to And we've always we've sense. tried to uh, combat those problems, you right. know. And it's it's really gotten us a black eye, um, <laughs> but we're still trying. Right. And. Um, Uh, it may be until there's some changes down there, we won't see an opportunity to do any improvement. Down where? The water treatment plant. The water treatment plant where we're paying the bill. See, there's a board that's made up of two representatives from Hartford, two from Centertown, two from Beaverdam, and one from the county that represents Bluegrass Crossings, and they uh -huh. make, supposedly make the decisions about what takes place down there. A lot of times, uh, you have to question, you know, who's making decisions down there. Right. She's been on the board for a while. That's what she gets every month to the building. Right. Until we get on that board. We've got two on the board. John Ross and and uh, I'll add another. Well, with Jeff Martin, we've already okayed him. So that's a, our two representatives, her husband and John Ross. Right now, of course, they're John's offering got us a discount from uh, the 293 down. Very Deep understanding about what's going on. Yeah, about because we raised so much cane with them because they've got a what, reserve issue. What, what everybody, what you talk about, everybody probably needs to understand the very last page. Yeah, on the very last page. Look at your very last page, yeah. very last page yeah. of your report. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And that's not Lisa's problem that it looks like it does. It came like that. She just copied. Right. Regional okay. Waste Center sends that to us every month. You can look each. Mm -hmm. So regional wastewater handles our wastewater. Yes. yes. We don't do so it anymore. We used to have lagoons. Can we do it? Can we? <laughs> yeah. uh, we? We can, but it it is an expensive problem. We, we, is it 700 see, and Part of that study, yeah, it would be more right. than that. We don't have to clean out the lids of goons, you've got to have a wastewater treatment operator. You've got to know how to process all of that chemicals. I mean, we've got we've got the plans yeah. that have already been engineered for a wastewater plant okay. for ourselves to locate down here at, at right. where the lagoons are. Okay. It's a pretty yeah. modern, up to date plant, but what we would have to charge the citizens of Hartford to process their <laughs> would waste water what their would be possibly the same amount of money. It'd be pretty close. I'll show you. The, I'll be glad to show you the plans okay. for that plan at any time. Yeah, because I'm interested in that too. Because again, it would be because yeah. I'm not familiar with it. You guys are. But, uh, but for, uh, for us to get the a plant like that built, we would have to go to the regional water council that's over here at Grad that covers the seven county area. They would have to okay our request for loans and grants and the project to be accepted. Right. Uh, when we tried to initially present this to the people, to them over there, they said, well, what's the problem that you have now that would cost you to do this? And I tried to explain it to them with, and be as tactful as I could, but 
they said, well, you need to work out your differences with your regional wastewater because the state is really pushing for more regionalization of both the sewage treatment and the water production. Right. They're pushing for that. They need a, a better regional rate. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, they do give us a break. Uh, you want to explain our break that we get from regional wastewater? Well, actually, the... We were on the board when, yeah. they, when they passed it for six months. Yeah, we've got it through June. A 30 cent? Yeah, the 30 cents is for till June. So they're charging us 263 mm -hmm. and, and which is probably more reasonable than paying the 293 And right. they, My question is, if you can do that for six months, why can't you do it for the whole year? You know? Right, right, right. But, uh, because they're processing, one of the other problems was our runoff is that what we were talking about yeah. it's uh right water from the top water from the ground and so we're we're processing that yeah as well actually our system is what do they say about 20 percent loss or something like that uh, we've got having our own we've got our fix system that? We, well you're never going to get a, a totally seal system you're never right. going to get that okay but we wouldn't charge ourselves for processing the well item. see back when we had the lagoons we were just the water was going down there the more i and i we had coming in the better it flushed the system down exactly see, That's what I'm saying. it was a and plus then and we didn't charge ourselves no for the extra well, there was no charge There's for no charge. there was no That's charge I mean, for sewage but, treatment. But then. these guys are charging us. Oh yeah, for that. it's got to be processed over here before they can turn it back in. What we were doing with the lagoons was it was settling, settling, and then it was kind of just basically that was simplified version of it. But it was going into the river, right? Know? And uh, there was no cost to speak of, and so we right. didn't, there was no charge to the people of Hartford. Right. Okay. So it was a lot more But it was reasonable. entered into as a reasonable thing in case, really, to try to benefit Bluegrass <coughs> Crossings and set, say, businesses, industry, you come in here, we can process your waste, whatever it is, mm -hmm. with this regional plant. You know, you don't have to have a, a treatment plant on your own property that they'll be able to do it down there. So it was tried to, uh, to be a plus for luring industry into Bluegrass Crossing. Right. But you see how that's been accomplished. Is I know. The people out there don't use very little, but very little water, uh -huh. and what water they've got, some of them are pouring it right back out on their water and their lawn with it, you know, so. Yeah. Well, uh, what's always bothered me is the industrial waste that goes through there that has different components than what and I get, produce human. And to get ours <laughs> back up operational. Well, and the thing of it is, well, if they charge not, fever them. The would never be operational again. They wouldn't go for that system again. It would have to be a system that processes, um, uses ultraviolet uh, yeah. system to make the what's going in the river as pure as possible, as clean as possible. So what, was, what they were doing with the old lagoons would not be acceptable today. Right. So once we stopped using that, that was... Well, they stopped using it whenever all these cities came together and said, we want the regional plan. Well, after a lawsuit was filed in Hartford, was under a, an order to do something. I see. The, the, <laughs> and the we couldn't do it by ourselves. The <laughs> worst thing is that... Uh, wastewater plant could have been in Hartford. We could have been reaping the benefit yes. of it. Yes. Wow. Right. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. But that's what the the monthly report looks like. Okay. It, it tells us what days, how much rainfall we've right. had. And, and really, don't try to correlate rainfall uh -uh. with what you pay. If you go over here to this, I've, I've mapped it out. I've charted this stuff on graphs. And... I, I tried a little and, bit today. And it just does no, this thing right here. There's no yeah. correlation whatsoever. No. Could, I mean, I, didn't, I just used January two years ago to this January, and it it didn't yeah. make any sense at all. There's no rhyme or reason no. to it. Yeah. And it had got anything to do with I and I either. From one month to the next, you can't yeah. look at the two and say, roll that two inches, and yeah. you get four, you can't figure nothing. Okay. Uh, 
the software, we're going to table it until the next meeting and try to see if we come up with some other options, mm -hmm. some other similar. Okay. Now, you're talking here basically three options either going with an asset management system, going with the software, or going with a clipboard that the engineer tells us this is what we need to do. You know, so that's your well, three, and, and that's three options. Yeah. But and it gives us a month to. To weigh this out, I'll be glad to take you up to Hardensburg to show you that system up there. I'd be interested in. Seeing uh, they do not only the they do everything up there except the police and fire department. They do right. all the maintenance. They do the the parks. They do the water lines, sewer lines. Uh, they do everything up right. there. Really, it does except now the money that they have coming in from. If you ask the mayor, he'll, he'll tell you that the money they have coming in from their water revenue, sewer revenue, whatever it is, uh, always has to be supplemented with money out of the general fund. You know, mm -hmm. it's not enough to cover what the expenses are. Right. Kind of and what that's, we're doing that's right what now. I think will happen here. Right. Well, we're already doing that, right? Yeah. yeah. But that also gives us time because I want to talk to you, know, you folks too, because. Yeah, take care of y'all first, obviously. Uh, okay. Uh, so we'll table that until you give me a chance to find some other uh, software options. The next item of business there is cemetery mowing. Um, in years past, it was one of our employees who used our equipment, our gas, that kept the cemetery mowed and trimmed. And we got to looking at it, and the last year we had that take place that one of our employees did it. It cost us $44,000 to keep the cemetery mowed from basically April to October. Okay. So we decided, well, let's advertise. And we advertised for a company to come in. Uh, Jordan Overstreet did it this past year. Uh, it cost us, for those same months of mowing, cost us $37,500. We saved $6,500 in a year's time by, by contracting out the cemetery mowing. I'd like permission to advertise for bids again this year at some time when it's appropriate for cemetery mowing again. Basically what we would do is they would mow the cemetery once a week. They would trim the monuments half, half one week, half the next week. So that's where the real expense comes in if you try to trim the whole thing by hand. You know, it's what they'd have to do. Uh, it cut down quite a bit in the bid once we went that route and just did half and half. And you really can't tell that much difference, you know, as long as it stays mowed. So I, if it's all right with you, I'd like a motion to enter into or to advertise for bids for cemetery mowing again this year. I'll make the motion. Okay. For a second. All right. Any discussion? Had a lot of positive comments about the cemetery this year about uh, the job that they did. They do an excellent job. There's always going to be somebody that finds a place between monuments where they, they skipped it, forgot about it. You know, you're always going to find that. That's going to end up on Facebook or whatever. But for the most part, they did a super job of keeping it looking, uh, looking good. So, any more discussion regarding that? All right. If you're in favor of doing that, up lift your hand. Thank you. Motion's carried. Um, council contact information. Uh, some of you have means of being contacted by Lisa about any kind of meetings, any kind of decisions between meetings, things like that. Um, We've had requests, uh, it's a good request to, for a, um, a personal uh, contact with, that's 
through the city, you know, that the city would provide. Um, you explain it. <laughs> where, where each council member would have the opportunity to have their name at hartfordky.org. Then if you, were, if you used it only for the city, it would be subject to open records request. That's the thing. If you use your personal phone text, then uh, any city business that comes across that phone means your whole phone is open, you know, for uh, search. Oh, good. That won't change the search button. <laughs> well, uh, I've been wanting the IRS to audit me, too. <laughs> we, we found out that it cost us how much extra? It's uh, $5 a month per, per email. It costs an extra five dollars a month for each person who wants an email that is through the city. Okay, then conduct city business on. You don't have to do it. You don't want to. It's up to you whether you want it. But if you do want it, it would be available. Also, are you willing to pay the extra five dollars a month per every person who wants it? That's the question. If you are, then we'd entertain a motion to that effect that you're willing to pay an extra five dollars a month out of the general fund for council members to have a dedicated email address. Can we just pay it out of our whatever fee that we get? We just no, pay for all. No, it comes out. It would come. The city would pay for it. It'd be a general fund issue. Just, the city would take yeah. care of paying for it. Y'all wouldn't pay for it. I mean, we've already got a a contract with a provider. You know, we'd just be adding. I mean, I've got one that says mayor at harperky.org, but I have to have because a lot of right. city right. business comes in on that. So, but if you'd like one, that's fine. Now, how much trouble is it for you to use what you've got on us now? I mean, would it be advantageous well, you to know, you? There's no trouble. It's, it's a matter of do you want your personal phone to be accessible to yeah. perusal by somebody, you know, that comes in. I'm going to answer it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't got anything on it. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, if, you know, if, if Kenny decided he wanted the to do all his business on a dedicated phone or email, then, you know, are you willing to take $5, extra $5 a month and let him do that? You know, that's the question. Yeah, if he wants to. Okay, I, I, I just have a motion then that you're going oh, to allow somebody to do right. that. I make the motion that whomever would like to have their name on the city records forever furnished <laughs> in the internet, <laughs> that we pay $5 for them. Okay. All right. Is there a second to that? I'll second. Okay. That's the discussion is it's just optional. Yeah. You know, oh, it's optional. If you want it, right. you don't have. Right. If you want it, we'll pay the okay. five dollars for you. Right. If you don't, you don't have to have it. You know. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. All right. If you're, fa if you're in favor of doing that, up at in hand. Yeah. Thank you. Just huh. let her know if you want right. like to have it. Right. And she'll set it up for you. Tony already knows that I call numbers that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's uh, in the first email. I'm you got my board appointments list right yes. there. Yeah. All right. Um, there's a bunch of boards and commissions and committees and councils that I have to find people to represent Hartford. Um, so I'm going to make the following recommendation. Uh, planning and Zoning Board of Adjustments. I'm recommending Vince Tanner, D. Donlan, and Billy Wood. I'll just do this all at one time. If there's anybody here that you don't want to be on this board or commission or committee, just let me know and we'll take them off out of the, out of the motion. Well, Vince Tanner moving out of town, ain't he? Do what? Vince Tanner moving out of town, ain't he? Well... I don't know. He's bought some property down here mm -hmm. off of mm -hmm. off of East Union Street. So I, they were planning on building a house there. So I don't know. Well, that, that totally is moving to Orangeburg. Uh, if he is, then he's no longer eligible to serve. He'll have to resign. I'll have to bring you another appointment. Okay, I'll check with him. 
Uh, so on the Green River Area Development District Council on Aging, I'm recommending Mary Ashford. Uh, Planning and Zoning Committee uh, for the count commission, uh, I'm recommending Neil Grant, Karen Ward, and Cindy Thompson. Thank you, somebody else. Okay. Uh, our Economic Development Committee, it has to be made up of uh, two representatives from the council and four representatives that are either citizens of Hartford business or business owners of Hartford. Um, and I'm recommending off the council Jerry Likens and Mary Bell because they're already serving on it. All right. Uh, Mary Bell is moving over from a citizen standpoint to a uh, council member standpoint or representative. But if any one of you all would like to do that, you're welcome to replace them. Uh, <laughs> and then I have three right now that I'm recommending is uh, Raines Evans, Tony Ward, and Tara Ward. They're, they're already on that. We're just re-upping them. I still have one more to bring for that. And then uh, ethics committee, or ethics board, in case y'all do anything wrong, these will be the people you'd stand before. Uh, I'm recommending Judy Moore, Dr. Keith Bennett, and Jerry Bevel for membership on those on that ethics uh, board. That's the ones I have right now. There'll be some others that will come along later, but I'm recommending those to the to the council, so I need a motion to either accept or if you want to take anybody's name off, I'd be glad to take, take their name off and let you find somebody to serve. <laughs> uh, I motion. Okay, you make a motion. I made, is there a second? Second. Okay, Eric made that. Any discussion about any committee or it's tough to find volunteers, folks, especially right. in some of these, like planning and zoning, where you're, you're going to make people mad, you know. Yeah. Now, uh, do they come to the meetings? No. They, they, go, they have their own meeting. The planning and meeting. zoning meets, the commission meets once a month right. in Beaver Dam at the city hall there. The Board of Adjustments meets maybe three, four times a year, depending upon just as needed. Mm. You know, if somebody wants a variance on a zoning right. uh, or wants a zoning change or something like that, they would go before the Board of Adjustments. The What about annexing? Do they do that? Or, like if we wanted to no. annex certain uh, Well, there's a whole process we'd have to go if we wanted to annex some property. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's been some discussion about doing some quarter annexing out 231. Mm -hmm. uh, the little market at Silver Beach mm -hmm. right there would like to be able to sell alcohol. That's what I was thinking. And, and, in order and, to do that, uh, they've got to the be within course. city limits. Right. So we would have to go out 231 mm -hmm. and annex a strip alongside the road till we get out to their place and then go around them. Right. Okay, that's corridor annexation. That's it's going to be cost prohibitive to do that for just one business out there. Right, we'd have to get more. We'd people. have to get subdivisions to say, sure. yes, we'd like to come in. The benefits of doing that would be they'd get police protection. Uh, they'd get a chance to vote in city elections. Yep. There would be the possibility that we'd run water lines See, right. and sewer, sewer lines out there. Trash you know, pick up. All there would be stuff. some right. advantages to it, some disadvantages. They'd have to pay city taxes. And mm -hmm. So, you know, it depends upon whether the, the people in that area would vote to do it or not, you know. And right. So, so it would be Silver Beach Stores' best interest to help sell that. They're to trying those. to right. tell people in that area between right. Hartford and out there, hey, if right. you want to beer out so here, you better, yeah. you better go for yeah. annexation. Yeah, yeah. So. you're going to spend gas to run the Hartford gas. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. but, I don't uh, think you must talk to Karen because she is. <laughs> I think if you get the right number of people 
talking annex, we, that could be some revenue for Hartford. If we but that would be, and maybe it's just people in this area just right across the bridge down down to the left, Riverside Drive there. You mm -hmm. know, it may be that they would like to come into the city and get uh, sewer, you know, right. get uh, water lines. And of course, they're getting county water there. Right. But uh, sewer lines, you know, and Trash pick up all police these. just go across a bridge and make a, you know, part right. of the route there. And so there's some advantages that, that they could right. benefit by being so close, you know. And, and I think Hartford, as far as their shifts, cover more than the county does. Uh, probably we have 24 hours, seven days a week. And the county doesn't. They don't patrol 24 hours, but the city does. 365 days a year. That's right. So that's a, that's a benefit yes. for those that wanted to. Exactly. Um, so Not even we, the state. The state, <laughs> even though the state patrols 24, but they don't patrol here 24. Right. So right. Uh, they're on shifts too. Uh, so Hartford is the only police coverage that you can count on for Hartford right, right. during the uh, wee hours. Yeah. Beaver Dam patrols theirs, and right. other than that, anybody else out in the county is at the at the right. mercy of the county or the state police. Right. And response time on that may be long time. Maybe a lot more <laughs> than what they did. You know, when seconds count, they're minutes away. There's a lot yeah. of seconds and minutes. And people don't understand that benefit that Hartford provides in having right. that kind of police protection. Yeah. Uh, that has to come out of their tax dollars, you know. And sure. So anyway, I think you got good people here for for them too. So I think, I, you know, yeah. we've got some, uh, you know, we've we've got conscientious employees all across yeah. the board yeah. in the city. I'm proud of our people Absolutely. who work for the city. Uh, they make a lot of sacrifices. They work for. Uh, they could probably get more pay if they were at somewhere else. You mm -hmm. know. Uh, bigger city or something like that but they love Hartford and they want right. the best for the people of Hartford and and I'm proud of them. Me, yeah, me too. Uh, I have one last thing to bring up. Hmm? Hey, oh, I'm sorry. She's going to keep me straight. Yeah. Okay, if you're in favor of all those board appointments, would you? Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. <coughs> the one last thing that we have listed is the alcohol beverage control deadlines. In a nutshell, we have an ordinance which says that people who have a liquor license in Hartford, and there are, there are five liquor licenses, um, they have to renew 30 days before December 31, isn't it? And that's our ordinance. That's ours. The state says they have to renew their license before January 31. Now, we're 30 days before. We say you got to do it before the first of the year. Right. The state says you got to do it before January 31. For the next year, yeah. that year. We cannot issue our license until the state issues their license. And the state don't care about our state, license. Well, the state doesn't issue their license till after we require our people to apply for their license. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two ways of approaching this. We can turn a deaf eye and ear to our ordinance and make them get their license after they get their state license. Okay? Or we can rewrite our ordinance, alter our ordinance, amend it to, to before the January 31 deadline like the state does. But what it does, it creates a problem because there's some confusion by those who have the liquor license, you know, that we're saying you got to pay this before January 1, but we can't issue it until you pay your state license which is before January 31 and it's just a confused confused now what we've done this this year was we just said you know we're not going to require you to pay we've gone against our ordinance we said we're not going to require you to pay until after you got your state license okay we, Tell them. Well, we only give the license after they get their state they just had to get their state 30 days early to comply this is it's just some confusion. But, but so how's our ordinance? Amend the ordinance. We can amend the ordinance. 
Now, every time we do an ordinance, it has to be published in the paper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And every time you publish it in the paper. It costs money. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe how much it costs. I know. To, uh, yeah. I mean, it depends on how right? much, how big the ordinance is, you know. How big is this ordinance? Well, the reason it's on the agenda is because there is a local business that asks. I was very upset about wow. the timing. So George said he would discuss it with you all. <laughs> and then there is another, there was another business that did not bring it up, but they also had issues of getting someone uh, um, to issue their license early as well. Um, anytime you talk to alcohol beverage control, um, you get little information if assistance. So no. It's not as... Unless you're in violation, then they're right on top of it. <laughs> to amend the ordinance, we would have to have Tara rewrite the ordinance. We'd have to have, when you do an ordinance, there has to be a first reading. You read it, uh, not the whole thing. You just read. We just read the caption at the top, mm -hmm. and then you would have a second reading at your next meeting. Okay, you would have the second reading. That's when you would vote on it. That's when an ordinance takes place. Okay, the idea comes up. We write the ordinance. We have a first reading at a meeting. Then at the next meeting, you have the second reading and vote on it then. And then it's got to be published. And Okay, that's the way ordinances work. Um, so what would you like to do? Would you like for us to just kind of turn a blind eye to the ordinance? <laughs> I don't like that. I don't well, either. I don't either. There's, there's, one other, there's one other option as far as if you do change your ordinance. There was, um, it has been overlooked when we wrote this ordinance to cover alcohol sampling. So when our local business wants to do wine testing at this point, they can do that and there is no fee imposed on them because it was not included in our ordinance. Right. So that is something that if you would, if you do decide to change it, you might want to entertain the idea that you would also put that in there because most places have a sampling license fee yes. mm -hmm. there, or they're doing it for Yeah, there's a fee for everything that you do with alcohol, right? whatever yeah. you do, whether you make it, you bottle it, you drink it, you sell it, whatever, there's a fee for But I mean, it's not, so it's not we, like we've got 15 liquor stores that are doing right. sampling, okay, that you're really going to see any of the revenue. It's just that it, it, it was something that was omitted from the original ordinance. And if we wanted to include it in an ordinance, we could also amend the requirement that. both at the same time so that's what i think All we right, should do because i don't like to turn in the, the old head the advertisement policy mm -hmm. around eight hundred dollars eight hundred it depends on how many pages of the, that you're actually putting in tara usually we usually try to summarize as much as we can and make it and i ask for them to do as small a legal font they have their requirements so they can only publish a certain small font mm -hmm. um but this probably was eight hundred dollars when it was when it was done. Just let Jerry read. But if we're just amending show. it, then it would just be the just amendment. Just let Jerry read it on the show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you still have to do your second right. first reading. Right. So right. if we made a motion today to do that, it would still be what two months before. Well, see, it's already taken care of this year, so there's no hurry. So we got we got it all year. Yeah. For that part of it, for now for the part. wine tasting, for you wine know, tasting. that license so thing, when, so we'd like to get it done as quick as possible ah, for that right. reason. But Especially, you know, before summertime. <laughs> That's when they How much money going. would come in from a wine tasting party? It would be just on the license. See, just Hartford license. being less than 3,000 people, we can have liquor sales in Hartford. Mm -hmm. We can charge license fees to those who wish to sell it. We cannot collect sales tax, tax not yet. on the sale of liquor. Beaver Dam can because yeah. they're over 3,000. Yeah. And so, so the Kentucky League of Cities has a political agenda that they try to bring before the legislature each year. And included in that this year is a request okay. to allow cities less than 3,000 to go ahead and collect the sales tax 
like the cities over 3,000 are doing. Right. So we're hopeful that that's going to pass. Because the statute that allowed Hartford to have a vote in the first place, what prevented Hartford was that same thinking because of our population numbers. Yeah. But when that was... Reduced, the legislature said we'll do right. away with it, no weight, but no they didn't, size limit on it. Right, but they didn't put in place no size limit for the city revenue tax. Nobody asked them to do that. Well, it wasn't included whenever yeah. they allowed right. the smaller cities. They did not include right. the sales tax provision. Yeah, that was, or, a, that was a big oversight. It was. But, uh, and we've been, fighting, that gets fixed, we've been fighting right. for a couple of legislative right. sessions yeah. to get it put back. Because that was a whole kind of motivation was so the city could have some revenue because we're talking about revenue. Well, you stop and think how many cities under 3,000 that sell liquor in the state and there's probably not a whole lot, you know. If the and county, so that's a that's a smaller priority issue for legislators than dealing with a pension fund or something like that. Yeah, you know? It's a bigger priority for that little city. Now, if the county ever had that, where it went countywide, wouldn't that in include, Hartford would be able to? No, the county would get that tax yeah. money. All of it? Because yeah. usually there's a city tax in there, too. Yeah, well, see... We don't, right now, don't have the ability to right. impose a city tax. So, how much is the license for per the merchant? Oh, it varies. It depends on what you do. Like package stores are what thousand, twelve hundred dollars, something like so that. So, one license pays for this one ad, one time, one time deal, basically. Yeah. It's, we don't know what the license would be for the wine tasting or the tasting. It's it's by state. It's it's state mandated. We have actually. Do we not? We don't have that in our. And that's what I'm saying. It's right, but we can add that in that. When yeah. we amend, when we amend our own ordinance, it can be. If you want to put it in there, you can. How many sore heads would we have to annex to get it up to three thousand? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Another, an annex would would uh, would increase our numbers as yeah. well. I think we ought to try to annex an as far as we can out of every lot. direction. I do too. <laughs> I did too, and I've yeah. said that for a long time. There's yeah. probably been more. Okay, there's there's a listing of all the fees and. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So I it's, it's pretty. So thousand dollars, I think, is what. Pretty extensive, yeah. you know. Uh, well, the only thing I think about if we don't impose the wine tasting, that could lead to a problem all of its own. <laughs> <laughs> I know a few wineries that like to come in and have a wine tasting. <laughs> well, they have to do it on site, though, don't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah. They can't do it anyplace else except at the liquor store. Oh. Right. Yeah. Well, they could yeah, I can't have one in my house. Well, <laughs> should be able to. Not legally. Because you don't have to drive home from your house. <laughs> That's right. You have it at the liquor store, everybody's like, okay. <laughs> not legally. Okay. Yeah. So the, it is on the agenda, though, to be discussed for the population this time? Yeah. So is that something that's what that, I saw the other is day? It, so uh, is that something that you need? You would want to wait on this then? Because I hadn't heard that yet. Well, that's just a sales tax thing. Is all it is. It's the deadline on on the licenses. Right, but there may be other things that you're going to want to change if that were to pass. It was pretty limited what they were going to do okay. as far as the liquor. Yeah. I'm just saying this was. really is no impact until next year. Right. And so we can table this for. I mean, you can. If I mean, if that were to do something, but if you can go ahead and say, you know, we want to do this, and we'll start tearing to revamping the, revising the. And then we can just decide later when. The deadline of the right. license and the mine. Well, she, you know, she's going to have to rewrite the these parts of yeah. that pertain to what right. we're talking about. Yeah, okay. okay. And we would have then have to have two readings on it, unless we call special meetings that would take two months. So if you're not careful, you you get right. three months down the road. Next thing you know, it's on top of you. Yeah. All so, right. Um, what would you like to do? Would you like to rewrite or amend the ordinance, or would you like for us to? Illegally, no. <laughs> I think we need to rewrite the ordinance. I think we do too. And include the uh, okay. wine tasting. That's what motion. I propose. Motion. I make a motion. I second. All right. Any discussion? In favor? Thank you. you know, that end of the tables off the quiet down there. What's wrong with that? I don't know. Are they smarter uh, than we are? Probably. In that motion, is, the, I know is it to amend it? Make quick. 
date <laughs> coincide. It's like, why say anything? I'm too old. <laughs> it's like, why say anything? I'm going to jump on it. <laughs> uh, that's all we can actually uh, move, uh, do any business on. It was just those items since they did a special call meeting. Okay. Uh, anytime that we meet other than the fourth Thursday at five o'clock, it's going to be a special call meeting. And so we'd be limited uh, as far as the agenda. If you have something that you want to include on the agenda, by all means, contact us and let us know if you've got an issue that you want to bring up before the, the council. But uh, normal meetings, we don't have that requirement. You can bring it up at the meeting anytime, you know, we can. It doesn't have to be on the agenda for a normal oh. meeting. So we're still meeting again this month? No. no. Oh. All right. we'll Next Thursday, which would be our regular meeting, right. you'll be in the KLC training over in Orangeburg. You'll oh, be getting out of it about 5.30, something like that. And that would put that us... Down. What time is that? I don't think I wrote that down. Uh, Sign in, start? Is, sign in is like seven seven thirty eight eight but eight to nine. I think. Yeah, to like be honest, nine. they're probably won't actually start on Wednesday. Yeah, and that's next Wednesday. Uh -huh. Starts at Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, Friday. Wednesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday. Friday. Three heavy dates. Let me tell you. Well, Fridays it quits mm -hmm. about lunchtime. So that's Wednesday well, yeah, through can, Friday. Yeah, yeah, it does quit about lunchtime. Have we signed hmm? Have we signed here? Did you ask me sign you up? You registered? Did I? You did? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know because no, I yeah. if I didn't, I need to. No, I thought that was us. No, I didn't. I don't have anything to register with. I said I wanted to go. Yeah. Oh. Sign me up. I mean, I'll just go, but I mean. Okay, make sure make sure that Eric and Mary Bell are signed up. And, that, and that's, you know, I all three <laughs> days or one of the three days? It's all three. It's, all three it's, days. it's got an agenda that covers I everything. It'll be implemented from overload like you can Okay. Carry a, bit, a big, heavy briefcase because they're going to give you a law book. And uh, they're gonna oh, every time I carry a briefcase, I get searched. So they don't do okay. everything for you. The law book is nice. It's, it is. It's, right. it's about that thick. It's got every KRS that pertains to anything to do with the city. I keep mm -hmm. it on my desk. I look at it. You know, Bronze multiple times in a week. Yeah, and I say I handed mine back in ten years ago. And that's yeah. eight. That's I eight till noon. Pardon? Eight till noon every day. No, no, no. no, no eight be, to five. Eight to five. Five, yeah. Right. And then they'll have a reception one night and feed you if you want to stay and uh, mingle with yeah. the nap sometimes. But there's some mingles. some things like uh, you'll get one hour of ethics training, which is required of all. Yeah. Right. people every year um, so that's, that's taken care of but it's just got a, a whole myriad of edu I mean the, they'll separate out say all council people go over to this room and all the mayors go to this room and all the, mm -hmm. all the committee people that are here go to this room they'll separate out <laughs> and give you some even more specific uh, all but the they'll help over here. Yeah, that's right. yeah. They'll, that's but right. they'll, they'll, especially they'll, the 8 o'clock one <laughs> They'll help you understand a lot more about what's going on. All right, so well, I need that. Then. And you actually get 21.75 hours of credit toward yeah. CEUs. Uh, uh, yeah, that counts toward uh, certification as a legal policy. Certified, <laughs> yeah, certified government city official or something like that. You know, it's it's nice, but. Uh, there's all kinds of training, and my my opinion is the more training I get, the, hopefully the more sticks with me, and the better job I can do. So, yeah. does anybody have anything that uh, you want to just talk about informational? Well, advice? there was this one on the uh, from that special call on December 14th uh, when you introduced Mr. Greg Shoulders with the government services about right. collecting delinquent property taxes. Yeah, was we going to visit with that again or? Uh, well, we we were uh, we were going to take it under advisement. Uh, we're we're starting a process now of putting liens on delinquent properties mm -hmm. in the city. Um, we will publish probably the first part of next month. Uh, we will publish a list of delinquent property taxpayers okay. so so there is a plan or yes. we're working towards a plan yeah. for he was going to do, that's right he was going to do something that that we can do ourselves we should do ourselves right uh 
I mean, he claimed he got 100% participation. Well, what he's, what he's doing probably, too, is picking, I'll say, a little hanging fruit. You know, he's going to, right. he's going to get the easier ones. Um, and, you know, he may have a 100% uh, success rate. That doesn't mean we can't have a 100% success rate, too. We've right. got several properties that are abandoned, dilapidated, uh, blighted that we want to address and try to, to gain control of those properties mm-hmm. so that we can sell them at the courthouse door to uh, re- remove some eyesores, you know, in town. Uh, we've had, we've got people who may not have paid their city taxes for two or three, four years, something like that. Mm-hmm. We want to put liens on their properties, but perhaps to encourage them to pay. I noticed that Owensboro last week advertised, had a whole page advertised in the uh, Messenger and Inquirer one day of properties that they'd foreclosed on. It was probably 25, 30 properties that they were selling at the courthouse door. Mm-hmm. People who hadn't paid taxes, you know. And it's not fair to the ones who do pay taxes. To well, well, of that course. To right, and that's revenue going. for so, the city as well. Uh, Tara's in the process of... Uh, uh, starting the the lien process on uh, placing liens on on these properties, uh, we actually have a lien any time that a property is sold. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're supposed to check to see if all the taxes are paid on. Right. I'm not sure that that happens. Do we have a code enforcement officer? Yes, we do. Does he come to the meetings and kind of bring uh, us on? He will if we ask him to. I mean, basically, what he does is uh, issue citations to people. If they don't clean it up, we go in and clean it up and charge them a hundred dollars per man hour, uh, plus any expenses. Right. Uh, that's a that's a lot of uh, keeping track of because when you issue one citation, that thing could take several. Unless he fixes the problem. Yeah. But when you track it, it could take a year. But we've got case. we've got a couple of properties that have been real troublesome to us. Um, there's one over on Frederica Street, uh, yep, rental property. Uh, there's uh, some properties up on Church Street that are abandoned homes. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the code enforcement can help us keep track of yeah. these. And, and we, we, we pay him, we actually pay him by the hour, but it works out to be about $200 a month is right. what it is. And he issues the citations. I mean, he's been to training. We've been to training together. And right. He, he, um, if he sees or hears of any kind of uh, code enforcement violations, he does issue those right. as a ten dollar fine the first time. Uh, if it's not rectified in a certain number of days, then the city will go in and we will clean it up and we will Put send them a bill. Right. If they don't pay it, then we put a lien on their property for that. Right. Know? So uh, it's just a long process. It is. You so, know, because if, for what this guy said he could do. And but he can't saying, do anything with code enforcement. See, no, all no. He, he, all he's doing is just. Right. You know, he's helping collect the taxes yeah. off of it. We uh, have some people who don't cooperate with the city very well. So right. It, it really is a thrill for me to put a lien on their property. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the code enforcement officer? Pardon? Who is it? Oh, Nathan Rucker. It's uh, Tara, Tara's, Tara's yeah. husband. Yeah. He does a good yeah. job. You know, he sends them letters. Uh, we've right. had people come in and pay their $10 fine, clean their place up. Uh, EPA has been at the house on Fredica Street mm-hmm. to... Uh, is it that trailer? That's right there. No, it's a house. It's a house. Yeah. There's a trailer right down there. Right from it, which is probably... Is the brick one or the... This guy's dog always out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the brick one, right? It's Kenny's neighbor, you know. <laughs> oh, I, I thought it was on the other side. They include their backyard, too? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose yeah. to. I mean, it's it's just a constant struggle with them. You know, there's some... Well, I'm all for trying to get all this done ourselves, but after a period of time, if... We're still way behind. I don't know. We can consider it later, but uh, revenue. Uh, we're going it seems to, like we need to. We need to generate revenue somehow. Well, we're we're going to address the uh, delinquent properties. Actually, 
we've done a better job with the type of properties last year than the year before, didn't we? Uh, we had a long list that we published. Hey, progress is progress, however it's like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're beginning to make some believers out of some people, you know, paying right. water bills, uh, paying that. property taxes, things like that. We're this is going to be like this every meeting for a couple of months. So you get your questions answered and you get your feet a little more firmly on the ground and feel a little more comfortable about it. And I don't know what you ever do, but... I took my turn this time. I'll let y'all do next time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was on it for nine years and didn't still didn't feel like I understood everything that was going on. You don't really, unless you're here day by day. And, uh, That's what it's going to take. Pardon? That's what it's going to take, I think, Coming down here, and yeah. Of course, I hate bothering Lisa. She's got all these numbers and everything. She's got to figure out. I feel guilty. Pass her away. <laughs> you watch her a few days. I'm taking you feel guilty. Well, uh, I supposed to get a new water heater. I mean, water heater, a water fry pit right there in front of my church. The fire hydrant. Oh, fire hydrant. And I never did get it. Okay. I got. Where is the closest hydrant? The closest one is up probably five hundred feet. Or, no, about six hundred feet. That's on Oakwood Drive. Okay. I'm supposed to got one. I just wonder. You gonna feel safer if there's one right there by your yes, place? I would. Yes, I would. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about it. We'll yes, see what fine. we can do. That's fine. Uh, huh? <laughs> we'll, we'll, you know how much hydrants cost us? Okay, oh, no, wow. anyway. <laughs> I know you have a bunch of them, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion we adjourn. I'll make a motion. Adjourn. All right, second. Okay. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you, motion's carried. Appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. Thank you.